The first thing I, I would want to distinguish is between emotional monogamy and sexual monogamy. There's a lot of confusion around this when scientists refer to so-called monogamous species that are generally birds because you see the male and the female bird tending the nest together. They're cooperating. One of them's protecting the, the fledglings while the other's off, you know, catching fish or whatever. Swans, for example, they say, oh, well, swans are monogamous because we have a male and a female in the babies. Turns out that once DNA testing became cheap enough that students could start testing the feathers that are left in the nest by the male and the female against the feathers of the, the babies, they find that in many cases, the male social father of those babies is not the biological father. Right. Interesting. So many of the species that people will tell you are monogamous actually are only, um, you know, emotionally or socially monogamous, but not sexually. Right. It's kind of like people that say uh, you should be a vegetarian because gorillas are vegetarians and look how much money uh, muscle they have. And gorillas have enzymes for breaking cellulose down that human beings don't have. So if you can eat a uh, a bowl full of fiber and maintain muscle mass, then hallelujah. You know, the point being is when you get these ideological belief systems that are not evaluated and investigated, then you get beliefs that turn out to be problematic to one's own health and well-being. And I think psychologically and socially, what you're bringing up is very important because I've seen that exact argument used by many people arguing for the fact that we are uh, monogamous by nature and should always be that way. And then it's picked up by religious people who use, look, here's an example of this bird. They blah, blah, and then they go off on their whole thing. But that's just unchecked. You know what that is, is cherry picking to suit your program bias. Right. And they're and they're picking very distant cherries, right? Like, <laughs> yes. You know, penguins, like the March of the Penguins was a big thing. I did a yeah. little riff on that in Sex at Dawn. So, and, you know, the March of the Penguins was this movie. It's about how these male and the female protect the young and the, the storms and the cold winds of Antarctica and blah, 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 blah. And I mean, churches across America were renting cinemas to show this film to their congregations. The whole thing was this great celebration of monogamy and Jesus was <laughs> right and blah, blah, blah. So I looked into it, and they're, they're emperor penguins is, is the species that's in that film. And it turns out that emperor penguins live about 35 years. They reach sexual maturity at about 15 or so. And from that point on, they're monogamous for each breeding cycle. So uh, they're only monogamous with the partner for one year. And then For next year, year, it's a different one. So they've one got kid. <laughs> 15 or 20 sexual partners in their lives. Right. Yeah, but we can't tell that in church. <laughs> so, yeah, it's cherry picking in terms of the species being used as examples and also the aspect of that species behavior that's being discussed. So it's very, if you look at, as I said earlier, you know, what's the most rele relevant species for us to look at? It's social primates. Right? That's what we are. Both. We're a highly social primate. There are no social primates that are sexually monogamous. Zero. So that's inconvenient. So let's look at birds, you know. Um, so anyway, the difference between... So monogamy is having one acknowledged sexual partner uh, when we're talking about sexual monogamy. Often, though, it refers to one marriage partner. So in historical references to monogamy, it refers to the woman having one husband. It does not refer to the man's sexual behavior. So according to that definition, which is the most common definition of monogamy used until the last 30 or 40 years, as long as the woman is only having sex with her husband, it doesn't matter what the husband's doing. He could be boning the maid. He could be seeing prostitutes. He could have a concubine. That's considered a monogamous relationship because the woman is only having sex with him. So there's gr great hypocrisy built into that.